Hello and welcome to this dynamic web webinar. Um, today uh, I'm going to talk, uh, give a tech talk, as we call it, and I'm going to talk a bit about items. Um, I will not give an introduction to items or go into great details on how you use items and when you should use items and stuff like that, because uh, I assume you've already been playing around with items in Dynamic Web. So the focus today will be some of the new features and improvements we've made in Dynamic Web 8.3.1. So uh, as mentioned, I'll tell you something about what's new regarding items, and uh, then we'll finish up, off with some questions. And I'm sure you have a lot of really good questions out there, and I will do my best to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, and the newest release of Dynamic Web is 8.3. Point one, and actually we are on 8.3.1.1 right now. And uh, in the release notes, there are quite a few uh, things regarding items, and I highlighted two of them here. One is uh, context-sensitive default values, and another is uh, changes in item restrictions. And there are a few more uh, items uh, changes. I'll just show you the list here. I assume you, you know this list of new features and, and important notes and stuff like that, and that you read those when uh, we release a new version. And if we check the items, we have uh, some small but, but useful changes here and uh, some improvements in the item publisher. So you can now publish a list of um, items that uh, are access restricted. So you can create a list of new items or some other kind of items. And then when a user tries to see the item details, uh, you can use user management and permissions to restrict access, but st still have a list of all the items to show, just to create the navigation menus and stuff like that. So that's a great improvement. And uh, one of the subjects I will talk about today is context sensitive default values where you can uh, create some dynamic uh, default values for use in your items. And then I will dive into some changes in the item restrictions we've made in order to improve how you can control your item structure. And um, these uh, changes are really great, but unfortunately we have to uh, make some breaking changes, but I'll just uh, talk you through what has been changed and then it, uh, it's just a matter of a few minutes to, to make the, the necessary changes in your setup. Just jump back to my, my presentation. And, uh, and also I will, uh, today I will show you some items on an example site that I've created. It's called items.dynamicweb.dk. Just open it here to show to. And on this side, I've collected a number of uh, examples on how you can use items. For instance, I have a, an image carousel up here that's item-based. There's a small block system, very simple block system with block, a block and block posts. There's a calendar as well and uh, a news system. And basically, the block and the calendar and the news is uh, an item publisher. And in the calendar, there's some, uh, J uh, some JavaScript library uh, on top of it to show a, a calendar view. And uh, if you want to see some examples on how to use items, I suggest you go to this site and, and check out the, the pages and how they work. And everything on this site is available in uh, GitHub. So you can go to GitHub and, and check out the item type definitions and the templates. And all the templates are created using Razor on this site. So this is an Besides showing how to use items and use Razor in your templates. So back to the presentation. Um, in Dynamic Web 8.3.1, we've improved the restrictions. And I really like to say that it's, uh, I think it's fun that we've improved the restrictions, but we have, and the reason for doing this, that is that it was a bit counterintuitive in the way you could control which items could be created where in your page tree, basically. So we have uh, changed uh, some things around and uh, I will show you shortly what has been changed and you can read more about this in uh, the release notes. Uh, but basically, previously, there was a lot of check marks for enabling an item. If you hadn't 
set, uh, put in any check marks, then an item could be used everywhere. But now we've changed that, so you have to explicitly state where you want an item to be able to create it. And also, uh, before 8.3.1, you had you could limit your children, but if you hadn't limited your tr- children, you could have all ch- any child any child below your item. But now you have to explicitly allow children. And regular pages and is a part of the the allowed children list now. So there are some breaking changes, but uh, the changes are really good and it makes it easier to to work with items and controlling how you can create items and where you can create them. Let me just uh, jump into the example site to show you some of the item definitions where I've. Uh, been using some of the new stuff. I go to the item types, and if we take a look at the block item type, for instance, then in the uh, restriction settings, I now have have to, to 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 as mentioned to, to check the the things that I want to be enabled for this item. Previously, it was a bit implicit when and and when not an item could be created. But now I have to allow my item in websites and I can allow it in uh, specific websites, for instance, in my items website or in just check the uh, check the all option, then this item will be available in all websites. And when I create new items, uh, sorry, new websites, then I can use my, my items on uh, new websites as well without having to go in, in here and edit all my items to, to check the new website up here. We have a few changes in allowed parents. We can now allow it in root of the website and we can allow an item under regular page. And uh, uh, for children, we can allow a regular page on this as well. And uh, one thing we've done is, is that, that now you, sorry, there's something wrong here. Yeah, down here I say that that uh, there's something wrong with the translations here. Uh, sorry about that. But down here I say that this <clears throat> this limit child item should not be here. Um, it's allowed children, and we have. I can allow a regular page below this item, or I can allow any of these items below my my uh, page. And this item type is a block, so I will only allow blog posts under that page. Sorry about that that confusion. So that's basically the changes, and it has been turned around a bit uh, with uh, respect uh, comparing to uh, before 8.3.1. But I, I hope that you see that it. it we think that it makes a lot more sense to do it this way, and it's easier to to, to see what items you can create where. And uh, if I just uh, jump into to the content area, uh, for instance, when I create a new subpage to my blog, then I can only create a blog post because blog post is the only allowed item under the, the blog. And uh, furthermore, I have... Uh, Restricted my blog post to not be able to be allowed under a regular page. So if I click on the front page, that's a regular page, and create a new sub page, then I. Sorry, there's something wrong with my setup. But you see down here, I'm not allowed to create news items because I've set up the right uh, restrictions on the news item uh, item type. Sorry about that confusion. I assure you it works. I'm just uh, confusing myself and hopefully I'm not confusing you out there too much. But uh, read the release notes and the important notes and uh, then ask any questions you may have about these changes on the forum and then we will reply as, as quickly as possible. Another improvement in Dynamic Web 8.3.1 with items is that default values can be dynamic now. Previously, you could put in a default value, but, but it had to be a static value. Uh, apart from date time fields where you could put in now to get the current date. What we've done now is that you can use some uh, values from uh, values from objects depending on the context. For instance, you can get 
properties from, from the current user or from the current page. For instance, if you create a page-based page, page item, you can copy the menu text uh, property from the actual page object to your item. And you can get values from the request and from a session. And you can also compute a value. So basically, using uh, syntax like this, you can make a computation and, and then the default value will be the result of this computation. So in this uh, example, I, I create a date that's seven days from now in a week's time. And we're working on documenting all these uh, features, uh, but I'll just uh, jump back to my example side and show you how they can be used. And hopefully that will work. So jumping back to the management center, the item types, where I have my news item. I have a title and an excerpt and stuff like that. And um, this news item is uh, page-based used for, for creating uh, item-based pages. So I have pages checked here. And when I create a news item, I want to reuse, get the, the menu text, the, the title of the page, and put that into the title field of my item. And I can do that by, by writing this. So I get, use the page object. I start the default value with, with an at sign and then the object. And then in parentheses, I, I write the property I want from my object. So here I get menu text from the page object, and this is basically using the dynamic web API. So any property on the page, uh, the page object can be put in into the parentheses here. And uh, in the author name, I want the default value to be the name of the currently logged in user. And similarly, the email field, I want to get the email from the user. And just to give an example of using the, the code stuff, I have uh, decided that uh, whenever I create a new news item, the publication time should be in an hour. So I take uh, now and add one hour. So now I'll just switch over to uh, another tab. Uh, I'm logged in as uh, Angel Administrator here. So in this tab, I'm logged in as a regular uh, user. So now when I create a new news item, I will just call it uh, news from webinar. So what I put in here, that's the page name. And I hopefully this page name, which will appear out here in the page tree, will be copied to my news item when I click OK. Yeah, so now you see up here, the system has copied expanded the add page menu text stuff to get the actual page title and put it into my title field. And the publication time is in an hour. Yeah, that, that's correct. That's in an hour. And it has put in my name, given the taken from the currently logged in user, and my email address. So this uh, makes it uh, easier to make something to, to get stuff and, and create some really useful items where you can can pick up some values from the context. Oh, so I had to put some. Um, some cool new features and items are shown and disabled close. And it, it's just uh, the, the context, uh, the default Dynamic default values, of course, are only evaluated the first time. So, of course, I, I can change this. So it's only when I, when I create a new item that the values will be set. But uh, so that's basically it. Dynamic uh, default values on items. That's really useful. And uh, you can see examples of, on this on GitHub and uh, on this item example site. So back to the small presentation here. I uh, put in some demo, and I've already uh, shown you how to how to do this. And uh, you should play around with it yourself and experiment it. And um, if I should uh, say something about the um, the stuff you can use inside the code blocks, 
um, up here. This code is uh, you. It's evalu It's a C sharp expression that you can evaluate. And uh, in theory, you could write any C sharp expression, but uh, uh, you cannot. Uh, you're actually running this code in a context where you only imported the the system namespace and stuff like that. So you should uh, probably limit yourself to to simple uh, computations like like dates and stuff like that. So. Um, that's uh, basically what I will say right now, and I've just uh, collected a few resources that I think you should take a look at. Of course, the release notes, whenever we put out a new release, you should check out the release notes and also check out the important notes and see if uh, you have to do something before upgrading or if you have to do something right after upgrading. In this case, it says here you have to do something after the upgrade. So read those and uh, ask any questions you have on, on the forum beforehand or contact the support department. And once again, the example site, you can take a look at that and, and play around with it and you go to GitHub and uh, get a copy of the item types and the templates to play around with. And uh, just to mention, we of course have some uh, more webinars coming up in uh, two weeks time. Sorry, I have to log in here. In two weeks time, we have a, a tech talk about publishing data in JSON and XML. And I look forward to seeing that. That will be really cool and, and a useful feature in Dynamic Web. And uh, in, in a week's time, uh, four weeks, uh, Ask will talk about uh, some channel and social publishing. So attend those. It's hopefully you can learn something, some new cool stuff. So yeah, that's uh, what I will say now. So now for the questions, and I see down here that there's already uh, quite a few questions. So now I'll just uh, take them from the top and hopefully I will be able to, to give you some answers. Uh, this is a question. Just oh, that's a really long question. It's Uh, th there's a really long question about some uh, some settings on parent-child relations. I, I just have to I just have to use uh, some more time to read the question, and understand it correctly. So I'll get back back uh, to you, Paul, with an answer on that. Uh, maybe I think maybe we should p p take it on the forum so we can uh, I'll make a forum post with the answer so we can uh, so you can see the answer later yeah and then there's a question here about uh, using the if property values are empty when we use for example user name and stuff like that um, if if we try to get a property on the user object for instance and the property does not exist, then uh, the default value with, will will be uh, contain the app users stuff. So um, uh, I'll just uh, jump into the example side and I can show you if I uh, edit my item, if I put, if I write user dot something that does not exist. If I do it like this, then when I create a new item, the default value will be this value. But if I, I use a username, for instance, and the username is empty, then the default value will be an empty value. So if, uh, the, if the user has uh, this, if the, the stuff inside uh, the parentheses is a property on the user object, then the value of that property will be the default value. Otherwise, 
i when when uh, the user doesn't have this property then uh, the default value will not be interpreted in any special way it will just be like this Yeah, and there's a question about default values, uh, date dot add hours. If it's uh, interpreted correctly, if I'm not using race templates, yes, it is. Uh, it has nothing to do with the templates. It's uh, something that happens on the in the back end. The whenever you create a new item, the server evaluates the the piece of code in the the default value. So it has nothing to do with what templates you use in the front end, and. Uh, the, the value that's stored into the database will be the result of the evaluation of the expression. Oh, there's a question here about if we can mix static text with dynamic values. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but... Uh, You can write stuff like this. Uh, yeah. You should be able to, to write something uh, like this, for instance, uh, and then get. No. You, you you can write stuff like this, this using code and, um, and maybe that answers your question. And if the question is if you can write something like this, for instance, where just some part of the default value is an ex and dynamic expression, then this will not work. Uh, basically, how this works is that uh, if the first character in the default value is an at sign, then the rest of the default value will be interpreted. And in this case, uh, we don't know how to in interpret this. So, so these uh, at uh, expressions, they look like eraser expressions, but they are not. So it's not a placeholder. So you cannot create, uh, write stuff like this. Because this will just be interpreted as a static string containing an, an uh, add sign and stuff like that. So you have to, to start the default value with an add sign, and then the system will try to interpret whatever comes after the add sign. Uh, there's a question, can we now set access restrictions for access uh, for the user to website setting items? Uh, no, you cannot do that. If you can edit uh, the website setting with the website, then you can also edit the website settings. And there's a question about the breaking changes. What is exactly is going to break and what is not going to? And if we have any documentation on that, uh, we have the documentation in the release notes. And uh, basically, if you have gotten into the habit of explicitly allowing your your, ch your child items, then you will probably not see any breaking changes. It's basically if you have relied on no check marks, uh, if you haven't set any check marks in the allowed and, and limit children, then that will change because now no check marks means that the item cannot be used, whereas before it, it, no check marks meant that the item could be used everywhere. Uh, uh, then the question is, it's possible to get access to the backend on items at dynamicweb.dk? Uh, yeah, basically it is, but uh, you will not get it. So uh, it's uh, better that you go to GitHub and get uh, the, the templates and the item type definitions and then set it up on the, on your own solution. We have to, to uh, make sure that we can control what's going into another, that I think that you will break anything and do something, but it's... Um, our example site, so we, we need to be able to, to control what happens on that site. But go to GitHub and, and get a, a solution, uh, sorry, get a copy of the, the item types and the templates, and then you can upload that to any 
dynamic web solution you have. Uh, then there's a question here, how I treat comments for the block. Yeah, and you just show, and basically the comments on, on the block system are the built-in uh, dynamic web page comments. So there's uh, nothing special about these. It's just the, the good old dynamic web uh, page comments. And uh, if I just show you here, if I... Um, edit my page and find the, the comments. Well, come on, yes. Uh, yeah, so, so basically uh, these are, are the, the comments. So it's uh, the, the comments uh, on pages that has been in Dynamic Web for, for many years. So it has nothing to do with, with items. And there's uh, more questions on uh, what we use for passing the C-sharp expressions inside default values, whether it's one linear eraser template no, it's not a racer template. It's uh, some stuff I've we found on uh, on Google for using a C sharp uh, uh, compiler from Dynamic Web. So basically, we, we take a create a, a string of C sharp code and have the C sharp compiler compile it into an object that has an evaluate method that evaluates the the, the expression that's been put into uh, into the default value. Oh yes, no, no, sorry, but yeah. So, so that's just a follow up on on how to use. You, you cannot use the uh, dynamic default values. They are not placeholders that will be substituted into to the default value as of now, at least. Maybe we'll change that if uh, if it's not too hard to do. And there's a question here about whether the default values can be lazily evaluated. So um, they will be evaluated when publishing an item. And currently the values are, the, the default values are evaluated when you create the item. And, and not when you save the item. It's when you say that you actually, basically, when we render the item edit form the first time, then the items, uh, sorry, the the default value expressions are evaluated. But uh, maybe we, we will change that or do it possible to have uh, the values evaluated on, on publishing the item or, or something like that. But we don't have any specific plans for that. Yeah, there are some more questions about uh, using the add expressions as uh, placeholders inside a string. And uh, we have to think about if we should do that or can do it without uh, too much, uh, too, mu too many changes and without it being too hard. But I'm sure some of you out there will have some uh, suggestions on how to, how to do that. And uh, we can, we will be able to improve. It. So let's uh, let's talk more about that on the forum or or somewhere else. Yeah, you know who you are, the you, you guys with all the the good suggestions for how to dynamically dynamically evaluate C sharp code, and uh, you can probably uh, I could probably learn a lot of uh, cool tricks from you guys. So just uh, contact me on the forum or an email or something. Uh, then there's a question about any plans and restrictions for website settings items. No, we don't have any plans on that. So uh, not any specific plans, but maybe we will have to, to make some plans on it. So basically, so you can restrict an editor from, from uh, editing the website settings. So once again, if you can edit a website, you can edit the website settings as well.
Yeah, then there's a question about uh, following up on whether you can get backend access to the exam site, and I could, we could restore it every night. Yeah, we could do that. But I suggest that you, you put it on your own solution. It's a lot easier for you to, to play around with it, and uh, we'd like to keep it clean also during the, the, the day. And then there's some more about the the, the, the comments. And, and basically, yeah, we're using page comments in the blog example because currently we don't have anything else. We have uh, something in the, in the future plans. Uh, we expect it to be released in 8.4, which will be out in, at the end of January, where we add an um, item creator module or an item creator to Dynamic Web that you can use to create items in the front end, and uh, maybe that will be used. Uh, we will be able to use that for creating item-based comments on items and, and pasting and stuff like that. But um, so you have to to wait a few months, and then we will probably come up with something that you can use for for stuff like this. Yeah, okay. I see I can look forward to 13 suggestions and comments and items in the forum. Great. We have to use the forum for stuff like that, and then we can get some discussions going. And uh, and, and we, we are working really hard on, on, on doing a lot of cool stuff with items because items uh, are the new black, at least in, in Dynamic Web. So just use the forum. Oh, so the links in the race of wiki is broken. That's not good. I will change that uh, shortly. Thanks about that. Thanks for that. So uh, that's uh, all for now. There are no more questions in this list. There's uh, the first very long question, Paul, that I will uh, read, and then I will get back to you with an answer, maybe on the forum. So uh, if there are no more questions, I will say thank you for attending this webinar and thanks for taking your time to listen to me and uh, come back in 14 days, two weeks, when uh, we have a new webinar. Thank you and bye-bye.